Yeah, so we're going to talk about um, energy requirements and what we're looking with energy requirements are um, factors affecting energy requirements. So these are our different factors that could possibly affect um, the outcome of the amount of fuel we need to, um, to live basically, to keep moving daily activities. So you've got activity levels, exercise, um, occupation, age, gender is going to have an effect on it. Um, one of the most important things you're going to look at there, we're going to work out there, is your basal metabolic rate. So your BMR is the individual's basic requirement um, for energy when you're at rest. And then obviously you've got the other factor that you'll fa um, factor into that, which is the physical activity factor. So this is a basic calculation uh, using the Schofield calculation that I'm going to ask you to do now. So I'm with, some, uh, with your pens and paper, I'm going to get you to work out the Schofield calculation. So basically what it's doing is it's taking whether you're male or female, uh, you take your age, you pick your age category, <coughs> and your BMR is equal to the number in the box times by your weight in kilograms, and then plus the number in the box. So it's going to be different for everyone. So you work out nice and quickly now. That's age, so it's 10 to 17 years old, 18 to 29 years old, or 30 to 30, uh, 59 years old. So you just need to pick which category you are. Times it by your weight kilos, and then plus either 657, 692873 uh, for your amount, or 692487 or 846 if you're a female. Once you've got that, you need to take the calculation further, so you've got your physical activity factor that you need to put into it. So if you're an inactive male or female, active or very active, um, you need to make that decision where you feel you're, you, where you lie. How often you try? Very active. And then with that number, I'm going to show you an example here. So this is an example for a <coughs> 28 years old, she's 65 kilos, she's of moderate activity, so 1.6 as you can see here. Yeah? So what we've got is a BMR is equal to 14.8 times 6.5, which is her kilos, plus 487 equals 1,449 calories. She then factors in a physical activity factor of 1.6 for moderate activity, which gives that times that by that, so times this by that, equals 2,318 calories as a basal metabolic rate. So that's how many calories she needs to consume uh, with her physical activity factor. What's, what's moderate and what's not There we go. So this would be no activity at all. This is probably three times a week, and this is probably anything above four to five times a week training. Um, and you, you, this is going to be vigorous, vigorous, high vigorous training. This is moderately low impact. Oh, I'm saying times it. What was yours? Do you times you it by your thousand one hundred times. Okay. <laughs> And then when you're working out, because we know we've, we've spoken about calories and how many calories and grams and fats and uh, carbohydrates, what we're then going to look at <coughs> is how we break those macronutrients down further. So taking into account this gentleman's one, 2,752 calories as the example, what we've then done is we're working as fats. So we know that the UK daily requirement suggests that it's 35%, 15%, and 50% for your macronutrients. So what they're doing is um, you're then taking the BMR times it by 35%, which will give you the maximum amount of calories you'd have per macronutrient, which would equal your basal metabolic rate for each client. 
Once you know what the calorie intake is, you can then work out how many grams of each uh, food you need. So for example, you can see these, these here, they become the calculation. And they go here. So for fats, we know that we need to divide it by nine because for uh, one gram uh, of fat is equal to nine calories. One gram of protein and carbs equal to four calories. So all we're doing is taking the number, divided by four or nine, so this person will need 107 grams of fat in their diet, 103 grams of protein, and 344 grams of carbohydrates. Sorry, where's that first number coming from? This first number is coming from the calories. So what you've done is you've worked out what, what oh, right, yeah. the percentages of their, uh, of their intake. This could change, obviously, depending on the diet. I mean, this is the UK statistics or guidelines. However, you might have your client on 20% fats, 40% protein, 40% carbs. And this will change and fluctuate between what you have your client on, basically. But the calculations stay the same, so this is going to be able to, be able to change this as you're moving along. Does that make sense? You know the uh, standard error of estimation? Yes. Um, do you just plus that on. Yeah, you can add it or minus. So the standard error, um, estimation of error is here. Standard error of estimation. So that's plus or minus. It's it's if, if you're active, you plus it, don't you? You add it. Yeah, and then if you're not, you don't. Yeah. But you can adjust this, make it small increments, small changes to it. You would want to. <coughs> you want to make sure the client knows exactly what they're consuming, and then you can write that down. My fitness pal is really good for that because you can check your client's details um, and go over that. <coughs> how, how do you work out the, uh, the macro instruments from that then? How do you, I don't know, I don't really understand. I'm not very good at maths. So, uh, right. it's, 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 so for example, if you're, um, if you're having 3,000, so what's your, what's your calorie intake? Uh, 3,679. Okay, so 3,679, yeah? You need to times that by 0.35, which will give you your calories and fats. Right, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Times it by 0.15 for proteins, 0.5 for carbohydrates, and that will give you your... Times by 0.35, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me have a look. One second. 